cancer. I, I'm in Austin, still, still traveling. Um, We get to a point where we're done and we're finished. And everything that we, we feel exhausted, we feel used, we feel manipulated, we feel drained. Um, and then it's like this helmet comes over us, that's our shell, and shuts any kind of reason out and just explodes. We just ex explode and everything becomes the enemy until we've decimated everything around us and can finally feel safe to take off the helmet and breathe some air and wonder what the hell happened. Like what, what happened to, why is everything, this, this inability or challenge that we have as Cancerians to control and modulate our anger, our rage, our, our defensiveness before we need to explode is a challenge that we all have. Because we do, we just let people walk on us and step on us until we're so ground in. The only way we can get out is to explode up. Now, it is how we are preconditioned, but it is not how we are stuck. We can evolve. We can make other choices. And there's this teetering point that we're sitting on right now, the seesawing that we're experiencing right now of just everybody get away from me. I need my space versus everybody being around me and me just giving everything over to them because that's the only way or the easiest way for me to figure out how to be around everybody is just say yes all the time and be what everybody wants me to be. There is middle ground. There are other options. And the challenge now is to look for those other options so that we don't decimate all the potential that we've worked so hard to gain. Okay? Now there it's, th this is going to be a, a major time of faith for us because these are areas and realms that we don't have a lot of experience in, maybe have no experience in whatsoever. Um, somebody has really irritated the living crap out of you. Uh, some Somebody who was supposed to love you. Remember that line? That, um, that famous song, um, you're gonna love me, I'm, 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 and I'm telling you, I'm not going from, from Dreamgirls. The line before it says, he was supposed to love me. Curtis was supposed to love me. And, and that's that feeling right now inside of you. This person was supposed to love you. They were supposed to be there for you. They were supposed to love you, but you only got little bits and pieces of them. And you only saw that love when it was convenient for them. Little bits and pieces, little crumbs that they would throw at you. Um, and those crumbs tasted so fucking good because it was a love that was nourishment. It was love that was vitamins. It wasn't just sweets or tastiness or temptations, that they were things that you actually needed. You needed love from that person because other people's love, especially at a tender age is when we're children, actually helps to build us up. It's actually the nutrients that our cells use to create us. And if we are robbed of those nutrients, especially if this is somebody who you're giving nutrients to, there becomes like these broken like, like pieces that just don't get to form of you. 
And it seems now in a strange twist of fate, Cancer, it is this person or these, this, these people, a couple of people in your life that need you the most. That need you to give to them what they never gave to you. And you know, love is unconditional. There's, there's no other. In fact, I always think that saying unconditional love is a redundancy because love is unconditional, but relationships are not. And we always have these conversations, heart to heart, cancerian to cancerian, where I, where I say to you, you can love somebody but not remain in a relationship with, even if it's your mother or your father, say, no, you don't get to eat or pick pieces off of me every single time. You don't get to do it. I love you, but you're not allowed to be in my life because of, of how, you, how you make me feel, how you treat me. It is that kind of person that you're worried about right now. That even beyond sense, you want to help. And it's for the simple reason that you're a good motherfucker. It doesn't that suck? Doesn't it suck to just be a good motherfucker? Because good motherfuckers always got to do the right thing, even when it's wrong for them. But you're playing it smart right now. And that's that toggle point that I was talking about in the beginning. Because in a true Cancerian nature, it's either all in or get the fuck away from me. And you're trying very smart, very smart right now. And I know that's because sun and moon are working in harmony right now in Cancer. I believe this, or the moon, I gotta check. I think the moon goes into Cancers pretty soon. So the moon and the sun will be in the same sign during this new moon on the 21st. So beautiful time for us to really be in balance naturally find that harmony inside of ourselves <sighs> enough to face the challenge being put toward us. And I think time. Mercury's out of retrograde now. Just came out of retrograde, thank God. Which means that things will, things will be easier. Conclusions will be clearer. Like, like uh, things will, anything that has to do with communications or information, processing information, will just be more clear. And that's, that's what we need right now. Because there is this, this sense to us, Cancerians, right now. And I am getting to the cards. And please hang on because I, I've added a whole new angel and spirit guide messages to the end. Weekly, I'll be giving you cancer-specific angel and spirit guide messages. So that's all part of this reading too. And yes, there is still always the extended, which is the full tarot card spread and the romance reading. So I hope you join me for that as well. But I, hang on, because I am going to show you the cards. There, there is this sense of you having enough sense to say, oh, I need more information. I need to see how this plays out because acting in the extreme here is could really compromise me. And honestly, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve to be compromised. So I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch and try to understand objectively, reminding myself that I have a right to nice things. I have a right to happiness. Even if I'm awkward, I have a right to, even if I'm a smelly little skunk, I have a right to smell the flowers. 
It's my right just because it's my soul. It's who I am. And I don't have to explain that to anybody, but I also don't have to yell it at anybody. I can just be me with no explanation whatsoever. And I'm gonna sit here and be surrounded by what makes me happy as I investigate and take in information about this thing that makes me very uncomfortable, to say the least. Piscean energy, open-minded, non-judgmental, but because Neptune is in retrograde, also not veiled or disguised or mystified by any kind of dream. Taking things in non-judgmentally, objectively, but also realistically, not fantastically. You don't have that. It's actually a blessing, to be honest with you, this, this sense of not having that fantastical, ro overly romantic sense to things, but being able to look at them realistically and still open-heartedly. Standing back and, and looking at both sides, right? To try to understand, but not at risk to yourself. That's why you are, you've got a lot of strength of character right now, Cancer. The, the strength to be able to sit back and look and be like, I can understand them. And keep a hold of myself and not give them all of me. Okay? I don't have to give them all of me. I can, compre I can comprehend their side. I can let go of hate. I can let go of hurt and disappointment. That's really just me taking care of me. Right? But I can also not hate myself for locking them out completely because you know that's the truth. You know if you lock this person out completely, if you didn't just even objectively listen to their side, you feel like shit about yourself. That would make you implode. It's not in us to not help people, to not heal people, to shut people down. And the only time that kind of stuff comes out of us is when we get so psychotically defensive, we want to annihilate them. And that's why we don't remember ourselves afterward because we're so removed from ourselves when that happens. So now is the time to not get to that point, to realize that we can defend ourselves and remain objectively open to what they're going through. What, like, why? Why are we doing that? Because we're love. Like, we, our heart shines. We're filled with love. I feel this is a person who has had their eye on you for a long time. This is a person who has you in their sight. Whether they have acknowledged it or not, they admire you. They want to be like you. They envy you. They maybe stalk you. There is that sense of this person having always really idealized you, but never given you the credit or never given you the satisfaction to realize it which is why they're so draining and you can't let them in your life because they never give. You don't even know how much they see you, how much they depend on you because they've never given you the credit for it. They've never done it. And so you know what? You don't have to give them credit. You don't have to keep them in your life, but there is a need for you to understand and be understanding and empathetic toward them. So I would say sympathetic more because maybe empathy is something that they would drain. They would drain. They would be like a vampire for you. But just sympathy in terms of tell me your side. I can understand. This is, this is, this is actually almost dissecting the demon. Understanding why they hurt you. Why they behave the way that they do. Not justifying it. Romanticizing it or even... No, I, no, 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 I won't say it. I was going to say forgiving it, but you are forgiving it because forgiveness heals you and actually makes, like, it takes away their power over you. Yeah. 
So that's the power of forgiveness. Realizing that I'm not justifying shit. They were a piece of crap to me. That's why they're not welcome back. But I'm not going to sit there and dance on their grave because now, that, now that's me being sick. And I just don't want to be sick. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be selfish. I want to love. That's the best part of us. We love. We nurture. We should be able to be proud of that for God's sake. Not degraded for it all the time. All the time degraded. Being pussies or because all we do is nurture. Everybody always like pisses on the mom. Because their love is just so obvious and unconditional. It's something that everybody relies on without giving it full credit until it's gone. And now it's, oh, they're reacting and re reactionary and they're pissed and they're angry and they're acting out because they want your attention so badly. Well, too bad. But I'm not going to piss on your grave. I I'm not going to do it. Hold on. Ultimately, I put the cards down. Sorry about that. Ultimately, I think that's what we're realizing is that the little disappointments that we feel inside of ourselves build up and they start to infect us just like people treating us shitty infect us. It's almost like we, we, need, we need to give ourselves the nurturing that we give to everybody else. We need to have faith in who we are the way that we have faith in everybody else. So there is this sense of we don't want those little, that, that pollution littering who we are in our soul. We don't want it. We don't want it. Because this, this is the mentality that's unhealthy. This person has that mentality of, oh, they let things build. They let things build. They don't ever share their emotions or say how they feel or give us credit where credit's due. And they hoard all that goodness. And it ends up rotting and infecting and making a pestilence in their system. And it infected our lives. And we're done with that. So we're certainly not going to... We're certainly not going to replicate that same behavior and infect ourselves. Because there is this admiration, almost obsession, because this is a scorpionic energy that's been built. I'm not saying you're dealing with a Scorpio, but it's been building for so freaking long that it's become unhealthy. That something that could have been so beautiful has become unhealthy and rotten. And that's the tragedy. But it doesn't have to be our tragedy because it doesn't have to be our loss. If we've sat back and we've decided, we, we've realized we've done all that we can do and we are doing what is best for them by being the example they need of balance, of setting boundaries. Even if you're born without boundaries, like most cancers are, we can learn how to build them. And in learning how to build them, that's how we teach others how to build them, how important they are, how necessary it is to not rot out our systems, to keep that fruit, that those potential for love, loving each other, to make it a beautiful thing and a nurturing thing and not something that it makes us rotten or rots us out and infects us. Because there has been some somebody, something building over time secretly that we that that we have not been that has not been acknowledged, that has been kept from us. And now all that has been built inside of us is threatening to rot and deteriorate. Let it shine. Cut that crap out. Just cut it out. Show how much you love them. Show how much you care. Show how caring and loving you are. Stand by your own side, Cancerians. Believe in who you are 100%. Your heart, your faith in others, and your heart and your faith in yourself, your value for yourself. Because both of those things can coexist. You don't have to choose one or the other. It's not, it's not a requirement. It's not a necessity. Ever. You can do both. You can love yourself. You can show your heart. You can show your feelings. You can show how much you love somebody without welcoming in. They're trashing your shit up. Setting boundaries doesn't mean you don't love somebody. 
it means you love yourself. Okay? So you have the permission to go ahead and do that. Because this person that has literally whittled away at you, chipped away at you, and not done good by you, not treated you right, for some reason they've reemerged, maybe even empathically. Empathically, you, you know that they're going to need you or they need your help. At the very least, they need your empathy or sympathy. Okay. You don't have to abandon yourself to love them. And if there's any lesson you learned by having them in your life, it's that one. And as soon as this motherfucker needs to be shut down with a healthy boundary so that you can love you, you shut them down. You don't annihilate them and explode. You shut it down. Because that's not you not being loving. It's you loving yourself first. And cancers have got to make sure to do that. Who could this person be? You know, you know, the only real sign here, there's Pisces, there's Cancer. No, no I'm sorry, there's Pisces, there's uh, Scorpio. So whatever this is, this is somebody who gets to you real deep. This is somebody who connects to you and can, can get those little in intricacies inside of you and chip away at them. There's somebody who has that ability. That's what I'm feeling strongly, this vibration. I don't know if they're an actual water sign, but they have that ability to get to you as if they are. There's somebody who emotionally latches on and connects to you and can get into those deep aspects of you that you're, vul like you're vulnerable to. So, you would actually be compromising yourself and making yourself more vulnerable to them by denying that you love them. I think you saying, I love you, I've always supported you, I want the best for you, is actually going to shut them down like that. Because they still don't know how to handle that kind of love. And you don't have to stay around and insist or teach them how. It's their job now. It's their job. And you're not going to settle for their half kind of love or what they can't handle. You're going to go on and take care of you. But part of taking care of you is being true to your feelings. You can love somebody without letting them back into your life. Let's go into the angel messages because I do find that there comes a time where my words just aren't enough cancer. And I want to share, I want to share these angel messages, angel and spirit guide messages for cancerians for this week ahead. The first one that flips over, I kid you not, 100%. These are the, these cards are the freaking bomb. Ugh. one more. I love you, angels. Angels are surrounding me, protecting me with their love and life. All of these cards. <laughs> All of the ones that I flipped over are bright pink, the color of love. Pure, pure love. And then there are three more who have not revealed themselves to me right now. I'll get into it. Messages coming directly from angels. You know what popped out first? Kindness. Being kind does not make you weak, but it also does not. Kindness is almost its own boundary. Saying, this is what I decide to give to you from me, but no more. A kind gesture rekindles your belief in the power of love. This is why I, I do these. Remember to be kind to yourself. What? Like, uh. There's, these surround me all the time. Guys, I use these in my dailies. I do dailies uh, Monday through Thursday on Instagram and Fridays on YouTube. Please join me for them. And I, this is why I've started to incorporate them into the week aheads because they are, they're such powerful messages. When I get stuck and I can't hear anymore, these angel voices come through. And 100% and what the message that came to me when I read this card is the reason why you're, you're showing kindness and love to this person who was not kind to you 
is basically to make your heart shine because there is love coming into you. And it's this kind of strength and sincerity that you need to embody to welcome it in. So this kindness is a part of being true to yourself and who you are. A kind gesture rekindles your belief in the power of love. Remember to be kind to yourself. So this is also somebody being kind to you. So very well, this could be that this person who has treated you like shit for so long finally realizes, oh my God, now I get it. And they show you a kindness that they've owed you for ages. Take it and smile. Heart song. What is your heart saying? Stop and listen. Your truth lies within the empty spaces between your thoughts. Your truth shines through from within your soul. Your truth is that which is eternal and unchanging. Your truth is love. And we just got that through the whole reading. These, these angel messages are just the most beautiful, powerful things. Be true to yourself and to how strong you love. And when this person comes back and finally gives you the acknowledgement that you've always deserved, love them back. You don't have to fall in love with them back. You don't have to go back. No, no, no. You've already moved on. You've already changed. You've changed so much so that now you're powerful enough to love them without needing the fantasy, the romance, and the sex. You don't need it anymore. You don't need them anymore. Once they give you the validation they owe you, you're free. You're free. This is not a going back. This is a completion. But love. I know you're struggling so hard right now to try to not love, to try to keep that person at bay because they've hurt you and they don't deserve it. Love. Love with those boundaries. Love using boundaries. 100% you can do both at the same time. Oh my God. Courage courage you have what it takes just do it we your angels are here to support you do you understand that you are eternally and completely loved at all times even when you feel alone somebody has your back your ancestors those people who have passed that still want to send their love to you and angels are around you surrounding you with love and light at all times you are never alone and they will be boundaries for you. That's why you're still here. That even though you have felt decimated and used and suckled upon by vampires, you're still here. Why? Because you have been eternally loved. So take faith in that. Know that, that they've got your back always. That somebody does love you unconditionally. That even when it seems like nobody was on your side, they always were. And let that send you forth. Send you forward to do everything that you need to do and accomplish in this lifetime for you to be yourself completely and not diminish yourself or hide yourself for anybody else's benefit, including a person that's already taken too much from you. Don't let them make you something that you're not. peace. This is going to, this is going to shake you. I'll tell you what right now, no matter where you are or what you're doing, inner peace is always possible. All it takes is a subtle shift in awareness. Think love and peace will follow. The reason why you're feeling such an imbalance now is because you're not allowing that love to come through. You're thinking that you have to put conditions on it in order to stay safe, and that's not true. That's not true. You can love purely, and that be your ultimate condition, which is, I don't love halfway. 
I love all the way, myself and you, and anything less is not where I belong. Gratitude. Make gratitude your new attitude. The stars will shine brighter upon you. All in your world will become lighter. Lighter as in less heavy and brighter. Say thank you. Say thank you to say thank you to the angels and the ancestors that have your back and are surrounding you right now, making you realize that you're not alone and that you are protected. And that you don't have to play the hard ass or play anything at all. You can be your beautiful self. You can love the way that you want to love. Love who you want to love. While also loving yourself completely. I tell you right now. I think your biggest defense is loving purely. Because this person is not going to know how to handle it. They literally they thrive on conflict. And if you love purely... That will be enough to turn them away. First words out of your mouth. I love you. I love you completely. I always wanted the best for you. It's going to repulse them. Or it has in the past. And now there's a strong sense of them coming back and being like, I, I was so wrong for what I did to you. I accept your apology and you accept their apology because you know that you deserve it and you know that it's true. And that's where your self-confidence comes in and that's where your boundaries come in. It's your gateway, it's your boundary, it's your gate. You can open and close it at will. Mindfulness. Be mindful of another's feelings and needs. I shit you not, these cards come out like this. Someone needs your love right now. A loving thought is all it takes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Someone needs your love right now. Even just in your thoughts. You can, you're so empathetic and psychic that even just shifting how you're trying to like hide yourself and not think about them, just allowing yourself to think about them and letting them into your thoughts and your mind, you don't have to pick up the phone. They're gonna feel that love pass through your psyche and the rest of you is gonna be safe. Let's go on to the extended, we'll continue this over there. The link is below, Cancer, I'll see you.